Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield the Select Board Board of Health meeting. How old is this? Apple? Yeah, a Apple. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> April 6th, 2022. It's now five o'clock. Uh, the meeting is going to be held in a hybrid Zoom uh, municipal offices here at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting is will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor's Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act on extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of the emergency, including an extension of remote participation provisions of this March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, uh, general law chapter 30A, section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans to for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices here at 8 Conway Street with remote participation details. Uh, Dial-in number is 312-626-6799. 800 number is 833-584-0276. Meeting code is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. Those who wish to be on Zoom can go on to the Town of Deerfield website, click on the board, the Select Board Board of Health meeting, and the Zoom link will be there. And hereby call this meeting to order. You want to read the executive order? Sure. Uh, for um, the uh, executive session? Sure. Pursuant to general, uh, general Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, and subject to the Chairman's declaration and a roll call vote, the select board may meet in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IUPA, AFL-CIO Police, and the UPS EU Highway if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town and pursuant to general law chapter 30A section 21A2 subject to the chairman's declaration and a roll call vote the select board may meet to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or contract negotiations with the police chief town administrator and chief operator if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect upon the negotiating position of the town does the chair so declare I so do do so. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, did I, I did we second? We have oh, to go ahead, vote? second. Okay, I second uh, that, Carol. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Caroline. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully Great. we'll be back in about an hour. Yes, and we'll we're inviting in town council. Um, I should have in the motion uh, we're uh, friendly at friendly amendment to invite in um, Casey Warren, uh, town administrator, Kate Federoff, town uh, council, and uh, uh, Chief John Paturik. Yep. And we will return about six o'clock if possible. Hey. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's in public. Uh, it's really Julie was on just a minute ago. I don't know where she was. Good evening. Uh, welcome back. We're going back into open session. Thank you, John. Uh, first thing is uh, public comment. We have no public. We have no public online or no oh. public here. Okay. There were. I know. I saw a few, uh, but everybody left. Anna Lee was here and Julie was here. and. Yeah. Anyway, and, uh, yeah, we didn't shut off or do another meeting, right? So, uh, no. there, yeah. there is another okay. meeting tonight, though, right? Is there another there, meeting? There are a couple other meetings. Yeah. Oh, that's what, what other meetings are tonight? Um, CPC. Oh, CPC is tonight. Oh, CPC. That's where probably they went. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, we don't want to have that. We don't have any hearings. No. We have an appearance, but nobody's here at the moment, right? No, we don't have an appearance, do we? No, no. we don't have an appearance. 
Okay. Uh, board reports. Oh, yeah. So, I'll, I'll, uh, is, is the door open? Let me go check. What's that? We're going to check on the door to make sure the door is open. Um, yeah. So, for select board announcements, I'm happy to say that we have, um, and we will. I'll make a motion for for these items. But we've settled a few contracts tonight, so. I would um, first like to make a, a motion to three. We have three, yes, three uh, uh, three contracts to approve tonight. The first is for um, uh, Chief John Paturic. We've extended the three year contract for the chief. So I would make a motion to approve a three year contract for Chief John Paturic for police chief and um, assistant emergency management director. And I will second that and thank John for all the work he does um, across the town. Mm. And region, yeah, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, um, you know, um, I've got to really say how fortunate the town of Deerfield is to have a gentleman like John Paturic as our chief. Mm. I agree. Um, he has does so much for the town. Uh, besides just being the police chief, uh, a lot of the things that he does that are under the radar that people don't realize that he does for the town. And it's just, uh, he is one heck of an asset to have here. So I can't yeah. say enough I, for him. I go to meetings all across the state. Despite yeah. the, being the bratty little kid that used to pester me over the fire station when he was in the center <laughs> of town, but we won't go there. Well, I go to a lot of meetings across the state and mm -hmm. I am always so proud that John represents us and is um, so on top of things and it's so mortifying to see what other towns sometimes have. And I'm just, as Dave said, I'm so thankful myself. Yep. Very so, happy. Very grateful. I so vote those, yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. All, all those, those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfer. Secondly, we have showers of appreciation for a second um, contract that we have approved tonight for um, Casey Warren as our town administrator for the next three years. <gasps> you are stuck with us for three more years. Casey, you, you made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> was it three years? I thought it was three days. Oh, three days, right. <laughs> we can make three days. We'd be very Take happy. a breath, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make it. Yeah. We are very, very grateful for all the work that Casey's done. Um, holding us together and getting us through all this craziness that we've been doing for three years. Um, yeah, the, uh, it. It's been, I, I just have to say, um, I'm, I'm really exhausted myself, but every time that I'm doing stuff seven days a week, I'm in contact with Casey yes. seven days a week. She's been and doing that. People don't know that how much she works holidays and weekends and you Too know, much. we've had so much stuff happening here especially with COVID. Um, mm. She did can't... bring that into town, right? When she came. Yeah, she COVID, came, she came brought COVID. Oh, I brought COVID. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least we got some some remote participation stuff because yes. of Jennifer, I have to say. Oh, I it's, it's, it's a Jennifer. team. It's definitely yeah. a team. Well, I really appreciate that. I'm, I, I am very appreciative of the sheer amount of work yeah. that happens. It's an around amount here. of work. And I know everybody gets short-tempered sometimes and we snap at each other but <laughs> it's really truly we're appreciative and um very much so sending an inappropriate hug yeah <laughs> <laughs> not supposed to do those things i guess but anyway very grateful so my hug. family says i'm only inappropriate when my dimples are showing <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> but um anyway okay. i i'm will second the motion um to approve casey's contract okay. any further discussion I'd just like to add that, you know, I've worked with Casey over the years and one thing I really appreciate about Casey is if we disagree on something, she doesn't hold back and she lets me know that she disagrees with me, <laughs> uh, which as a manager over many years is one of the highest values I put on an employee is that 
they stand up for themselves and they aren't bashful about saying what they really think. Yeah. Because, you know, um, I do not like having smoke blown up part of my anatomy by anybody. Uh, I like it truth, honest, and just that's the way it should be. Yeah. And it's just. We do, we learn, we learn a lot that way. And I think yeah. we work so, together Trevor, that way. Yeah, we, Trevor and I were definitely. We'll have some. We well, have some arguments, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we just but learn from them. But we that's, do. that's we again, that's, that's the nice thing about people with opposing viewpoints. Yeah. Um, because then you have a discussion, so and then there's just... things in both sides that you say, wait, wait a minute, we can maybe tweak these. And you, come, you always, I feel, come out with a better you do Absolutely. end result. Absolutely. I always feel like we have a better decision uh, and, when all three of us are involved. And, you know, that's yeah. why, you know, as a board, Casey. we work so well because we have. <laughs> Differing opinions, yeah, and it's what just we work off each other, and it works well. So, yeah, for sure. So, thank you, Casey. So, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Mess. I, Dave Wolfram. Great, and um, I'm also very pleased to approve um, another contract tonight for um, our wastewater um, cheap wastewater operator. So that um, Eric Meals will be hopefully starting. Uh, you'll be presenting a. Um, a contract and hopefully we'll get that approved as well. So um, make a motion to approve the wastewater operator contract. And I will second that with relief. Any further discussion? Hi, uh, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, no, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. And that's all I've got, I think, for that for now. We'll see about the others. Um, Let's see, we have um, any other items? Oh, I, just, I, I think you'll touch on this a lot, but I wanted to thank you and Chris Curtis uh, mainly for, oh, for putting together yes, the I was climate thing. Say, and I'll let you yeah. take the run on that, but I just can't tell you how much I appreciated attending that and all your work that went into that because I know it was a lot of work planning and. Well, I, I'd like form. to thank Deerfield Academy for a lovely lunch and Eagle Brook for um, snacks. And we should in the morning Those coffee and donuts. Killed. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, they were. And, oh, yeah. and so hopefully <laughs> we should we'll write a thank you note, uh, uh, yes. official thank you note. I've already let them know how appreciative we are to feel. But that so kind of sets the tone for the day. But the idea was that we start the momentum back again. Yeah. and um, really try to focus on what we're doing here in the community and to be resilient. And everyone throws that word around, but what that means is that we will continue to function after an event. And whether it's the whole community or culvert or whatever we do, you need to be more resilient because it's coming. But we also have a lovely bubble that we live in here and, yeah. and it will be the right place to live in in climate change. Um, we just have to make sure our quality of life is stable mm -hmm. and that's yeah. basically what we're trying to do so was really um, i was really excited there was a lot of information um chris uh curtis uh had it all tape jonathan from fcat was there and that was lovely um so and then oh and alex helped set up for lunch too so um it was it was really really great um and everything will be up online so people can view it. And I think it was very much informational. It was great. I learned a lot about how to take care of your own property and what you can yeah. do yard by yard, as you said, to to try and make a difference on well, climate, climate I, we, change. I haven't, I haven't had time to do it yet because I've been trying to work on other grants with Alex to make sure that we can operate as a board of health. But there is um, additional money. I, I knew more money was coming down for the Long Island Sound Initiative, which was what we all in New England put together a few years ago. And, um, and it was really because of all the soil that went down to Long Island Sound from Irene. So all the states got together. And so the conservation districts have about $40 million. And we will, hopefully the conservation district, this is not any workload associated with Casey, mm -hmm. but we will be the pilot town, if you both approve of this, um, working with the conservation district, we'll get a loan, I mean, a grant, um, and it's, you know, between 50 and $100,000, but it's to help people, a yard by yard activity, setting up pollinator gardens, rain gardens, dragonfly habitat, 
you know, what can you do as a good steward of your property? Mm -hmm. What can you do, you know, uh, um, to keep like the impaired phosphorus levels in the bloody brook down, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and if we're trying to locate a consultant and a um, installer so that people will have, this is the person that you go to for having someone come to your yard. This is the person that will do the installing and it's reimbursable through this grant. And, you know, it's a multi-year grant. So, you know, we can do a few yards every year. And I think people will be really excited and really interested. And that will fit in with the 319 grant we have for Bloody Brook, for sure. And, um, you know, so I think it's really exciting. It's just, I haven't put the work into it yet, so I can't announce it, but um, I think we have a good chance of getting it. Good. And then the other thing that came out of that was, um, you know, it's our 350th next year. So the idea of planting 350 trees for the 350th. And so I'm going to talk to Chris Miller, poor Chris Miller, but he's got in the next year, jot down all the spaces that we want to put a tree so that we have 350 places identified for the 350 trees. And I'm hoping the Friends of Deerfield will sponsor the tree planting so that we can, you know, um, bolster our tree belt and also um, provide some more shade and um, stuff for the activities downtown. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, just, uh, I guess one other comment that I'll have will be attending the um, Western Mass Selectors oh, yeah. Association on Saturday at the East Hampton High School. We have a great group of uh, legislators, Chief John Paturik and Chief um, of Pittsfield will be doing a presentation on, Chief Wynn mm -hmm. from uh, Pittsfield will be doing a presentation on the impact uh, on small towns for, and large towns for the uh, police reform bill. And then um, there's all kinds of ARPA stuff, all kinds of like breakout sessions. It's from eight to 12 and um, we have all kinds of legislators there. And I wanna thank Natalie and Joe, they'll be there and they were here at the climate change uh, forum this weekend. So I can't thank them enough for their participation and, and helping us move forward on these projects. So, Did yeah. we get confirmation that we're signed up? I, I, I asked Jennifer. I, I, I think I she did. signed you guys up. Yeah, Jennifer. Because today was the last Because I keep, I keep getting emails no. saying to sign up. Yeah, just never mind that. It's they're sending that to everybody, but you're signed up. Remember, I sent you the confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so okay. it was Denise and yes, I saw Denise on and the list. Mary. And Mary. Yep, they're there. I saw that list today. Okay. Yep. Do you guys we, are we have to have our vaccination card. You want to have a? Uh, no, I don't think so. Do we have to? Have, oh they wait. Say? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Do you? I'm do almost you have positive. Card? I'm almost positive. I I can't actually find mine. I, oh God. <laughs> let me look it up. I'll I find out and I'll get, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. I'll let you know. I know it's somewhere in my house, but I can't. Yeah, remember. when you see it, Carolyn, we'll, we'll go ahead and look it up on the on the state. Yeah, vaccine record so that they didn't have anybody <laughs> by my name but don't don't worry I'll talk to the state we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get it out for you don't All right, worry Alex. <laughs> I was worried yes, about that uh, Anne Mary's there um John Paturik is there I don't see you signed up though Anyways, you can you can walk in and register. Anyways, what you can't? I signed you all up. It says it on my MMA page. She Make sure I'm going to take get me a printout so that when they give me a hard time, I have it. I sent it to your email, member, or your I sent you a picture of the page where it said you were registered. No, but you sent me a picture, and it uh, I can't print out from my phone. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did I text it to you? Denise is and Mary is. I am and John is, but I don't see anyone else. But just come. And well, register. Jennifer, yeah. print out that you wrote me yeah. in there somewhere. Right there. Can you can you forward that to me? Jim? Yes. Okay, great. I'll forward it to Isabel. It's on the list. Yeah, yeah. make sure I'm on the list. Yeah. 
Tell Isabel that I did sign up. Or You're I always on somebody's sign list. It's a box. I know. Line, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> I like that. No, it should be it should be a good time. Really looking forward to uh, getting yeah. together with yeah. everybody again. It's been years since well, we've been able to. It's actually really serious because we've got to advocate mm -hmm. how Western Mass is getting some money. It can't all, the governor's bill, yep. if he filed his bill, it all goes to the MBTA, it goes yep. to electric, other stuff, and it, it's all Eastern based. There's right. no money out here. It's crazy. I, I, how, can, how can he do that? Yeah. That's not, that's just not fair. It's just unacceptable. It's, it's not acceptable. Not Really, I can't really wait fair. to have that conversation. So on what Saturday. we have to do is the the filing of the bill, all this CCI business that we're doing, yeah. is going to happen in the next two or three weeks. Yeah. We've got to say, you've got to put us in there. We've got to have the ARPA money for yeah. Senior Center. We have to have the ARPA money for you know uh, our sewer treatment plant yeah. to reduce the, the burden of the sewer treatment plant. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason for us not to have that money. Yep, I cannot wait to have that conversation. And I, and I just want to say tomorrow, um, you know, we voted the thousand dollars up to a thousand dollars to hire that Mike Smith. Yeah, we're River meeting Road. at eleven to go out to um, River Road, and then we'll swing up to Pine Nook and look at Pine Nook, and we'll see what he feels if if we're going to be if the hazardous mitigation grant is going to fit. Okay. And then. Um, what we need to do is we might need to put on, I'll know tomorrow, so I'll let Casey know, we might need to vote some additional funding to hire a grant writer for that hazardous integration grant because it's open now. And I have an idea, uh, I, John has an idea and I have an idea of where we could get someone to do it. Um, and it would be relatively inexpensive, a couple thousand dollars, but we've got to have someone write this up. Mm -hmm. and get it in in the next like three weeks okay all right yep but it's 75 percent reimbursement so this is the best deal that we're going to have more or less okay okay oh. um anything else on select board board of health um i just want to say uh, the homeland security meeting on tuesday um there is a region-wide uptick it is sequenced mostly DeltaCon, uh, which is uh, pretty much what the state was saying last week. Um, but the uptick hasn't resulted in really any other, I mean, there's not been a lot of hospitalizations or anything. So I think between um, the, our high vaccine rate and the fact that there were so many people that had Omicron variant, the, the DeltaCon is the BA2. Right. Um, um, which is the Delta and Omicron combined. But I think because there were so many people that had that surge that we had in January and February, um, there are people that are getting it. There's no question there's an uptick. And, um, but they're not, nobody's getting hospitalized as far as I can tell. Right. Um, the PCR testing that we're having over here, there's no question the numbers have gone way up. Alex, we've had, how many have we tested so far? 24. 129 people since one month. Yeah, so that's since the beginning. That's pretty good. Just in the last two days, it was almost 50 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, we had 28 people today, two no shows today. Wednesday, we had 23 people. And on Friday, we had um, just, we had 21 or something like that. Yeah. So it's so, all in the last couple of days. It's yeah. Because so it's going to up it's going to continue to go up with all these other closures, as we all know. Mm -hmm. um, so this is part of our mitigation strategy, and it's really working. And I just want to say thank you to Alex, um, because this is no, no, no it's all you guys. I didn't do anything. I, uh, it's come on. no cost to the town, but um, the federal money has dried up for uninsured people. And what uh, uh, Curative, the company that is doing the testing, um, has said that they will continue, they will at their own cost will cover the uninsured. So we will continue with that. So that's pretty exciting. And then I, I want to say in regards to the PCR testing that um, since the weather is getting nicer out that, you know, there is a, an option. I'm trying to work with curative to go ahead and try to move it outside. Um, if we're going to keep having the kind of increase in volume, we might have to increase it as a as a drive-through as well, um, 
So I, I don't know if that's something that we want to discuss further down the road. Well, the reason we didn't, we wanted to use the senior center because we didn't want to wait for the, the little kiosk per, you know, thing, but maybe that's the way to go if we're having volume increase. I don't know. We have to see how, how it goes. Anyway, it's pretty exciting. Any other, any other help stuff? Nope. nope. Alex, do you have anything to talk about? Uh, septic season is roaring. <laughs> I've done uh, a few total fives and uh, perks already. Um, so I, it's, I'm just getting so many phone calls. I mean, it, I'm already booked out all the way until mid May. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, we're working on getting, um, a, a grant. I don't know if you want to talk about that, Carolyn. Well, yes, actually a nature grant. Go ahead, Alex. Oh yeah. So it's a $35,000, uh, grant when it comes to workplace, um, um, you know, emergency preparedness and uh, technical assistance and assessments when it comes to, uh, you know, emergency pre uh, preparedness um, in, in response to COVID-19. And what we're, it's a three year, really two year um, grant uh, that's gonna take three years and it's about 30, uh, 35K over that span of time. Um, and so, it's just another uh, element that I think would really help um, facilitate the process of, you know, really getting our um, our emergency preparedness down in, in Deerfield and being prepared in the event that another pandemic were to occur and, you know, creating the kind of uh, capacity building. Um, so, yeah. Um, it, because we feel pretty comfortable that we're going to get it, um, we re reduce the uh, Board of Health expense line item um, or suggesting reducing it down to zero. I, I, we want to keep it, the line item there, uh, but it appears that all the things that we were thinking of, we we're going to have to, you know, like that's been coming out of the select board office expenses for, you know, COVID, we can cover under this grant. And um, and it will cover some of the meetings and trainings. So if I, I just want to let you know that I think we're going to, we're hoping to, we'll know next week, right, Alex? Yeah. I, I definitely by next week. Yeah. P Peter and I will um, discuss. No. Okay. So I, I mean, that is really going to help. And it also covers some of Alex training is in hours. So that's, you know, a couple hours a month and not a huge reduction, but you know, every, every few dollars counts. Yep. So that was pretty exciting. Thank you, Alex. And, the, and then Alex is working with me on the RFR with Jennifer Hoffman to do a floating um, health agent because the work is expending. I mean, there's more hours even. We have two more job Descript things that just came in the last two weeks, short-term rentals that we have to inspect now. And um, we only um, inspected them if we had problems before. Now we got to inspect them constantly. And there's also this new sewage treatment plant responsibility. So um, anyway, the RFR for the is from the Department of Public Health and we're the Consortium of Greenfield, Montague, uh, Sunderland, and Deerfield were hoping to um, put in for a floating health agent. It will be 60 to $70 an hour, which is pretty much what um, the going rate is. And um, Green, But Greenfield will hire them. They'll just come here and work, and then you know they redo the reporting. So there's no additional workload for Casey. <laughs> I know, I hear you. <laughs> hey, congratulations on the renewal, okay? <laughs> Three more years, Casey. No, I don't think he wants to see you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, I mean, I have to say we're trying very, very hard to make sure the workload doesn't land here. And he and I have talked about that. So. And, and uh, whether it's the Conservation District or Board of Health, we're trying to mm -hmm. shift everything out so someone else is doing the reporting, like the, the admin person 
that the conservation district would handle that. I have a line on a group that might be able to help us with that. Too. Okay. Okay. That Veronique shared with me. I just have to okay. go back and check in with them. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yep. So we can move on. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing on our agenda is the uh, complete neighborhood support letter. Yes. So I drafted that complete neighborhood support letter. It was a very quick turnaround. Um, and I hope it I, went out already, didn't it? It did. Um, okay. I just need you to vote it effective April 1st. Can make oh, a motion sure. to approve this uh, support letter for the <clears throat> regional application for complete neighborhood partnership uh, approved April 1st? Um, I will second that. And thank you, Casey, for. I, I, I think we all signed it on you Saturday. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I thought I had to be Jennifer. in there for Monday. So Jennifer um, caught you. Oh, right. I caught we those too. <laughs> we did it. Yes, yeah, that's did right. It. Okay. Yeah. Lily turned it in on Monday. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I vote yes, Carolyn. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn. I, Dave Wolfer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for getting it Saturday. Okay. Next thing is a. Uh, one day liquor license uh, for uh, champions for a uh, uh, event at the Flint Center. Um, I will make a motion to approve this. I will second that motion. This is um, this is for the yeah. This is for a member. It's only member only yep. right kind of right. thing and for historic Deerfield. Yep. yeah and it's sort of like meet john davis the new yeah also the new really nice man area. yes excellent very yeah. nice so happy to meet him the other day yeah, so. yeah. outside of their service area too, yep. the Flint Center. all right so i don't good. know if it's a technicality but they're just asking for beer and wine this is liquor Oh. One day liquor license yeah <laughs> oh maybe Does that's say wine and malt or one day it says wine and malt uh, for the license, but they yeah, were serving beer and wine during the wine and malt has beer and wine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this says yeah, liquor license. I would I would think that we want to say liquor license anyway, because that's broader, right? Right. One day liquor license. We don't have yeah. a beer. Yeah. Wine, wine and malt. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. It's not all alcohol they're looking for. No, it's not okay. alcohol. Okay. It's wine and malt. All right. Okay, just okay. okay. The box up at the yeah. top, the yeah. little thing underneath there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I second it. I yep. mean, I made the motion. I second it. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. You. Okay. Now we have uh, an appointment to uh, a temporary yep. treasurer collector. I'll for make, tax title props, uh, purposes, I'll make a motion to um, to appoint um, Sarah Kimball, the uh, temporary treasurer collector, um, so that she can do the tax taking um, that may be needed in this year. Um, I will second that. Okay. All those in favor? Um, I, Carolyn. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. And thank you to Sarah yeah, thank so you for that she can. Yeah, she wants to keep up with the schedule that Barb had already created. Yeah, so, yeah. And remember when Barb left, we talked about this that you know maybe we wouldn't we wouldn't need to do this right away. But I'm glad that she was pro yeah. proactive and reaching out to get the information and keep on top of it. So it's very great. Yeah. Love it. Can I ask a question? What they do to these mics to make them so much better for picking up? I don't know. I don't know, Jonathan. I turned on the uh, it's, you know much better. It's much better. Turned yeah. on the. Um, the game, huh? the equalizer. Yeah, you guys sound great, right? <laughs> I like that. You guys sound great. All right, it's amazing. It I think it's, it's so the much equalizer. Better. Yeah, because wow. that hadn't been on before. Yeah. Trevor, you sound really good. Well, thank I you very much. Like really, like really crisp. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Budgets. Twenty-three budgets. Capital ATM warrant. So okay. can I talk about that? Yes. All right. Perfect time to talk. <clears throat> so at the finance committee meeting last night? Yes. Last night. I spent <laughs> meeting every night this week. So um, there was, you know, they're putting putting the budget together and going over the capital lists and all. And there's really um, they're getting to the point where, right, we 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 need to make a decision on what we want to do 
with the ARPA money that would help them um, do some of these capital projects that they couldn't afford to do otherwise. Um, so the, these are some requests that we had was to um, um, you know, pay for the mini excavator in full instead of leasing it because it would save us $15,000. Um, we were gonna pull the money from the sidewalks, but we really wanna keep that money in the sidewalks. And this is kind of an economic development thing. If we can start working on our sidewalks, we're improving the town. So that's one item. Um, so the other item, let's see, that she wanted us to look at was board of health salary, so we can get to an expenses. And then um, I think, oh, and then so we should really talk about the, the capitalist. I'm gonna go grab my other book, but um, there were some items to talk about, maybe doing HVAC for the police. Um, I know we talked about moving, I'll, I'll, I can grab mine. Um, we talked about maybe moving the money from the church, but there is some hesitation on that because we're worried, like, depending on what we have to do or what we get into, Julie did look, had people look at the structure there and I know up the she floor. said John and Julie were over yeah, there with Tim. They did a good yeah. walkthrough, and I think it might make sense to, um, I, I believe that we should take advantage and vote that ARPA funding as. Um, uh, drawing a blank on the name case it would have this in a minute but um about uh, revenue loss revenue loss yeah because then once we do that the select board has sole control over that money and what we do with it so i think but what we need to do is list out the projects that we want to use that money for and i, I what I'm not clear on, I think you take one vote for all the money coming in, even though we don't have it yet, but I think we take this one vote, we say what we're going to use this money for, specifically us deciding, and then we, um, when we get the money again next year, we take another, we, we report again to uh, the government what we have planned to spend the money on, and I think it, it keeps it in the control of we've been really wanting to, to spend this money that was the most benefit for the town drive economic development and uh do some of these projects that we've been waiting to do but haven't had the money because of you know lost revenue um so i i think you know we should talk together do we think that doing the hvac in the police department is a good idea i'm going to go grab that list so i have it well okay you guys can talk Um, I don't have a problem using $100,000 for the HVAC system in the police department okay. because not, not, it is a health and safety issue. Um, it's, you know, the air conditioning freezes up. It gets icky in yep. the summer. It's not healthy. And um, quite frankly, I mean, we should be worried about our police officers, although they don't really stay in the station that long, but you know, Deb is there all day right. and that's, it's not healthy, yep. but um, also if it's not, if on the inspection day, it's acting up because it goes through cycles. Yeah, well, that'd be good. Um, the inspection day is done by DPH on our, on the cell. Right. And the cell, Thanks. if it doesn't, if, if it will not pass. Okay. So sorry. It's a health and safety thing that we have to fix. Yes. So I don't have a problem using a hundred thousand dollars for that. Yep. Um, the other item was the brush uh, wood chipper because of a safety issue there. You know, we feel like that was a good use of funds for that. It was fifty nine thousand. Um, I don't necessarily. Again, it's a health and safety thing. Number one, it's really old. Yep. But. We use it constantly because we're we doing do cleanup from storms work. all the time. Yep. And there's no safety um, shut off or shutoffs, something. nothing. I right. mean, it would be horrendous if um, anyone got hurt. Yep. But it, can, from a money point of view. Can we have Chris Miller evaluate that? I received an, in, an email from an individual in town who used to maintain that and said all that safety stuff is on that, which. Oh, because we were told it wasn't. And I, I, 
I'm like, look at even if you, I'm even not, if from a money I'm point, it. I mean, just, put aside the horrendous thing if one of our employees got hurt. Right. Yes. Yes. But the money that we would spend in disability and no medical problem. costs and all yeah. that is more than the stupid thing. Right. So, well, it, and it's my opinion is if the safety stuff isn't on there, well, in my history, you do what they call a red tag. You red tag the piece of equipment. That means nobody can use it. Right. If the safety stuff isn't on there, it should not be used. Right. Period. Right. Yeah. And so, if we have to, we contact out with, I think we use gyms or somebody yeah. else uh, to do it in the meantime. But I mean, uh, well, we can get an answer on that definitively, yeah. but yeah. I think it makes sense to kind of do that. I think the other, you know, the other question was the HVAC, um, the building for the highway department that I think was $10,000 to do the HVAC software. And again, that's an operational cost right. that will, it's not safety, but it will reduce our expenses for operating yeah, because -term. it will, um, you know, we're wasting money when the, the thermostat thing doesn't regulate itself automatically. Right. right. But I just want to caution, this is my feeling on this. We had said right along that this really, we need to stabilize our tax base, we need economic development. Yeah. And I, I don't want the money fiddled away. I mean, we really got to talk lot. about the Leary, Leary lot. The, the, the Leary lot uh -huh. is we've got to focus on the Leary lot yeah. and get that going because if we want Hampshire, it seems like they're genuinely want to expand. Yeah. Hopefully we can negotiate the access out to Elm Street, but they've got to work with us and we've got Correct. to have that money available. I agree. So we can't spend all of it on, on other stuff. On this. We can't let it go because right. we got to have at least three or $400,000 because that was what the estimate was Correct. before to yep. do it. And, and maybe we design stuff and it's a little bit right. more. So we're going to miss the deadline because we're not, we don't have an agreement with Hampshire now on the mm -hmm. access. So we can't alter to the design, but you know, there's going to be a lot of water coming off that roof. So mm -hmm. the green infrastructure, the, the holding storage water filtration system for that Leary lot yep. is going to be expensive. And we hopefully we could get MVP to pay for 50% of it yeah. because they would, that mm -hmm. said we scored, would score high enough. They already gave us that, but the deadline for this right. it's is gonna May take a 16th. Year, I think. So it'll mm -hmm. take a year, but we, we have to say that we're going to use that money for something uh, like that. Cause that, that will have right now. I mean, I'm ready for well, So the, okay. Well, well, you know, I just want to point out that whatever we decide to try to offset with the ARPA funds right now. We're basically voting it in. We're using the ARPA money on it. But once we use it and we've already voted it in, that means the money that we voted in actually goes back into free cash in the fall. So if it's not like- If we don't like, use it all, if we don't use it all. Yeah. It would roll, because you're, you're, you would vote to, to consider it a revenue loss. And right. then you pay for the projects that you have in front of in front of you sign your contracts because they're funded. Um, and if you aren't able to spend it all, I believe it does roll to free cash. Well, we, I think we can we uh, we have the money available now. My from my understanding is that money that is there is under the direction of the select board yes. to name to those projects. So right. we name five hundred thousand is what the you know capital what the capital that. was for for the Leary lot that goes into a fund the capital fund for doing that project right. and whether it gets done this year or next I don't think that matters it, it goes into what amounts to well, an appropriation appropriation well, fund but for that, that. I guess that's where I want the discussion because I I know it will save fifteen thousand dollars to buy the mini excavator yep. rather than lease to buy right but it also will take up 77,000 of our money already. Well, we so, have 700 and what? We've got over 700 now in the next And we're gonna get another 700. Before. Okay, I thought it was 500 and something we got. No, you've got 700. So, so that money was definitely came from yes. the fur cost yes. Yes. down? Yes, okay. yes. and then we'll so get that double again. In with a two okay, delay. I, I did not realize that the yeah. second I mean, yeah, the, the money here. was adjusted. I I was thinking we only had five hundred. No, no, no. And no. the second payment is supposed to be 
paid before the end it of this is. fiscal and year. It is, and so we've asked repeatedly about that. We'll get a well. We'll yeah. get probably another five before June eighth or something, and then it may be August before we or September okay. before we get that last two something. As long as we have. I, I think we can do the Leary lot, even if without, of course, we want to try to do, try to get it in under an MVP program. Sure. Because that's money that we don't have to pay. Of course. But um, I, I think if we, if we do between four fifty, how much is this money that we're just talking about? So we're talking about. Um, if you do everything that we just said, we, you said. Let me just add that the up. The mini excavator. This is what, 77? What, what is that? We've got 23 uh, per year. No, that was um, yeah, the, the 23. The, no, the 2330 so is the lease. 59 for the chipper. I think it was 77 for. Um, we have the. The um, mini. Where is it? Well, the, the, here it says. The, oh, here it is. 100,000 for the 2023 yes. request for the mini excavator. Where was that? I'm trying to find that here. Excavator. Uh, no, oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, it's for the well, purchase. right. Yeah, but it was um, twenty three thousand. I thought there was. It was like if we could look back. It was yeah, twenty three for five years. I think it was. Oh, I thought it was three years. No. Okay. Well, I thought it was seventy seven thousand. And then it you, used you don't to be. Have, you don't, I don't have my capital. I can. Yeah, I'm sure I have it. I could look at that it's too. It's a capital app so you've application. Got One fifty nine between those two items. And then we had, um, just look at these. The, other the, on the application tells you the full amount. Yes. That's not the least yep. amount. I'll and I think it that. was 77. Let's see if I have that Wait. one. It wasn't, it wasn't 100,000. That was, no. Young. I think it could change the price change. This, this says 100,000. Yeah, that's the price change. It's the lower. I think it is my computer. I'm sorry, I have to go up. That's OK. Um, all right. I don't think it was. A, I didn't think it was a hundred. Well, I've just this says twenty three requests. So. I didn't think it was a hundred. I thought a mini excavator. Yeah, it was a hundred thousand. Is what the request was. Right. It had changed over the past two years. The cost. Of yeah. Due to the age of the town's infrastructure, we're experiencing more wastewater, storm drains, blah blah blah, all of that. Um, I did see one of these in operation. Well, this you know exact what? It unit doesn't matter because we're road. having a meeting tomorrow night. So, yeah, it's a hundred. <laughs> theoretically, we can approve it, and then uh, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, to the down. mini excavator was one hundred and twenty nine thousand seven sixty five, and we got a state contract bid for ninety nine thousand. That's the okay. newest quote. Why? Well, that was as of November. I don't and know so why I was thinking. They have an here. updated quote. The ninety nine thousand is the same amount. Mm -hmm. Um, and that comes with. And we the, were going to do it as a lease if we had if we had done it as a lease, I could have signed off on it. But because CIPC finance and the select board are still sort of talking this through, mm -hmm. I hadn't done that. Um, so but, the lease the lease amount of twenty three thousand. Yeah, yes. the lease amount is twenty three thousand. The payout amount is ninety nine, but we had rounded to one hundred in case there was something. Um, uh -huh. I'm, yeah, I'm still not clear in my mind. I would still like to lease to to rather than to lease to buy. And the reason why is if I don't want to buy a piece of equipment when I'm not going to use. But we are. I, I mean, the argument well, last year. I just, I just want to make sure they're buying the right piece of equipment oh. because the original spec I looked at was too big. Yes. This, that, this, that's this, why this I is the one, the different. 306 mini. This so was the 306. One, we'll sort it out tomorrow because Mark Brennan is oh. um, coming for the. Because you have a 5.30 meeting. CIPC has a okay. 5.30 meeting before well, the meeting. Straight enough. So that's so, kind of the intent. Theoretically, let's, let's so say move, yes. Moving forward that we're yeah. looking at that with you guys well, sorting out how you do it. We should be thinking about $300,000, $350,000 that we should be using hybrid funds for. In uh, including, addition to the Leary lot? Huh? Well, the Leary lot was about five. We had said so our concept was 500000 That's what we put in our capital request. Um, you could add so the police department HVAC, which I really think is a good idea, plus the HVAC modulator in the highway garage. And leave it at that. Um, and then don't, if we, if you, and I'm trying to get the vote language, just so I get it right, I asked Tom Scanlon for it. I'm going to have to call well, him the, the lesser amount, the lesser that we do is the easier 
you know, the lesser projects or amounts pulled out is easier than, um, I mean, it makes it easier because you have lesser things to report. Well, actually, it's that's just the thing. one report. You check yeah. off what you're going to, you check off, you're going to do your revenue right. loss. Mm -hmm. And then you put in your, the list of your projects you're going to do. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of reporting updates. That's what Brenda and I were trying right. to meet about. You just this have morning. to say that we did These, the HV system, right. we right. did the highway thing, we're doing, we're the, doing the Leary lot. lot. And then that's all. And so what we could do for tomorrow, if those are the things, let me write this down, so give me a second. Um, so it's the 100,000 for the mini SUV. The only other request in here was to put uh, another 100,000 towards the sidewalk repairs. Um, right, because we had put that in there. And that is a request for us, thing. but- But we know, have 200 already. And if we do- let's, uh, Yeah, yeah we can wait till I'm, next year. Okay. Oh, is to okay. increase it is uh, we have the 350th next year. I'd like all the sidewalks as complete as they possibly could before the parade. No, that's I actually agree. A really I, good I, idea. I, that's, that's really good, except the problematic is the parade's coming up Sugarloaf and that's state. The state. They are going to be paving. I mean, on the sidewalks, no, but they are going to be paving, gonna paving some paving of the Sugarloaf. Okay. Not all of it, but. So what's some. the route going to be? It's, it's coming from the water district up Sugarloaf and then going to Frontier. So you can have the sidewalks done on that section of North Main. Yeah. yeah. You know, granted, well, we originally thought we were going to start at the north end and the south end and work our way in. Well, so we, that doesn't affect what we plan on doing. Well, if we do the Leary lot, though, hopefully we'll still be going out yeah. and, and, and getting have, in the middle. You know, we have this money that we can decide later in the year that we well we, we have to do vote again in September when it's free cash and, so. and you have to vote again when I, you get I, the extra I money I I as long as and by then maybe we know, we'll know how much the Leary lot is right. really going to cost you get more engineering on that yeah I mean we're doing this for the benefit of Berkshire Brew too because we want yeah. we yeah. want to take and all the, the parking mess the that's yeah. all around people's neighborhood here and move it to the Leary lot Right. So you get the, all those businesses that want to right. businesses that are in right. pizza place, you know, get a well. sub well, and go sit at the park. So, yeah. you know, once we get to the point where you guys, so we have to report whatever the ARPA approval is, what the vote is by April 30th is the first reporting period. Yeah. So the reason it's on this agenda, especially after last week's finance committee meeting is I wanted you guys to start chewing on it so we can hopefully have a decision by the 20th. Um, really, if finance is asking you to do your decisions by next week, um, that sort of shortens your time, but you will have an opportunity at the hearing tomorrow to further discuss it. And you are already posted for Tuesday for joint meeting, because um, I do realize you, I messed that I, up last week. Um, it's okay, Casey. No, oh, no one cares. If, if I'm just to zero this down we have 500 for the leary lot we have 100 for the excavator so far we have 59 for the um for the wood chipper and 10,000 for the hvac over there and 10, 10 for the hvac at the highway garage and oh, then that's 100 just, uh, that's just yeah. all that is is software yeah it's to update the software our software is out of out of date and a, and a hundred for this mm -hmm. this one over here. So you know that's seven sixty nine. I don't know if we have seven sixty nine. Maybe the you know maybe we take well, the maybe we take the balance of the Leary lot. We do you know four hundred now and then four hundred when we get the other money or the. Well, I'm just oh, thinking that you know, you know we'll have another space of what we're going to be getting in June. Right. That's what I mean. Right. We'll have a lot more in June. Least. We should be. Hopefully we get except, the we except, have to come up with a budget now. Except right. that is um that money was supposed to go into the the senior center renovation. The second tranche of our ARPA money was we had talked about just putting it into the senior center well, renovation. That was fifty something thousand for just to re do some of the repairs to it. No, no, no. This is the actual like into moving. That. So I don't remember talking about that. When did we talk about that? Because we because well, CP, the, what we were going to do was leverage the money from the CPC in the future for 20 years. C use C CPA. C CPA money. Yeah. Use what was in the funding in the balance, you know, the free amount, mm -hmm. and plus our ARPA money. And we could 
get a really good start on it because we had estimated around three million. So we're almost coming up. Well, because we have part, to stay part of the plan for the senior center was that the old senior, yeah, the, the yeah, building, the grammar, grammar school, yeah, was that there's about two million in CPA funds now available, right? And if and we're pretty sure we're going to get it. The grant comes through for the park. That's another million. That's another million that's going to come back here. And then what we were going to do is leverage the remaining balances with a note against CPA. That was the right. game plan. That gets us. That gets that gets us there. I think that's how Tim explained it to me. Yeah, that's right? the game plan. It wasn't no. Uh, it wasn't CPA. That I, it was CPA. I was thinking we were using yeah. funds. Oh, I didn't think we had enough CPA money. Well, it, we don't if we don't get the park grant. Oh no, uh, including the park grant. No, I think we do. Well, well, I, I, that's a discussion for. I yeah, guess we later. don't have. You know, we don't have to decide that. Now. Right. Right. I didn't. I wasn't aware of that plan, but it's interesting. You know. But no, because that. I mean, we were adding it up. Yeah. And then what we were looking for was another additional seven million, which we wanted the state. That's for of. the earmarks that we were right. looking for. Right, and that's what we have to be doing on for Saturday. The, for the senior. Housing. I mean the senior, senior center, center yeah, community, community center. center. Because what we're doing is adding Seven, on to the other side. Yeah. For it's for the picture, it's whatever everything to the left of right, the elevator. Right. That's that's what we want to put in. Yeah. And that's like a we'll need additional funding for that. Yeah. Probably. We definitely will. What the because that we can't use any CPA funds for that because that's not a historic no, preservation base. It's, it's um brand but, new building but there's we're hoping that you know they come back through with some earmarks for us on it to be able to do that so well they have to because it's not fair what the governor's bill is right now yeah. no money comes to us yeah. from that so what we have to do is convince our legislators to file additional bill where are there's earmarked at least seven yeah. million for this i know saturday i had a good discussion with natalie and, and so, oh, thank you. Thank so, you. and you know, the obvious wastewater seniors, you know, it's um, a high priority for the town. So, well, you can't get any more shovel ready than we are for a sewer right now. No. And no, so I, I do there. not understand. And it's just a matter of getting the, the money earmarked to us. Right. I don't understand why we can't. And those are, of you that are watching, Basically, what an earmark is, is those are funds that are unencumbered by the town of Deerfield. They're just money that's coming to the town to do these projects. Um, the governor, the, there's $9.7 billion coming from the federal government, ARPA funding to the state. The governor has filed the bill. The majority of all the money is MBTA and all the upgrades to stuff around the Boston area. There is no money coming to Western Mass. So what we want, need to do is have our House and um, Senate delegation file uh, opposing bills that need to go to conference that will include um, ARPA earmark for the Senior Community Center of 7 million. And then hopefully some sewer money so that um, people's sewer bills can you know, the rate can be reduced a little bit. You know, the borrowing oh, nice. will, the debt load will be reduced. Yeah, right. Well, I so feel- what you came up with the total? We have, we have about 710. If we don't do the chipper, we do the chipper with um, free cash or- We have money in the free cash because yeah. we were looking at it for free cash. Yeah. Right. So right. we could look at doing the chipper on free cash and we could do the excavator, um, the HVAC in both buildings and the 500,000 for the Leary lot set aside. And then in the fall, when we know, when we get the extra ARPA money and the free cash, um, we can, we can do the other hundred thousand for the sidewalks because we're already going to be, I mean, unless we need it, I mean, we'll, by the time it gets to them, like it'll be here before you know it, we'll be able to vote that again. Yeah. That way we're not we're not um, going in the hole. We're not taking money from capital stabilization. We can save it a little bit. 
That would make me feel better because there's no sense in voting the extra money for the sidewalk. I, I'm agreeing started. with you, Dave. It makes sense. But, but we have let's time. just spend what we got and then we can vote more. And we have time in this fall. I, well, I and hopefully by aside. the fall meeting, yeah. we'll have some of the sidewalks done. Right. And we'll know what our costs right. are and what we'll we have need to right. you know, Because, yeah. you know, right now, it's, you know, basically the concept is the town will get the understructure of everything done, then we'll hire a contractor to come and do the paving. Right. 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 We'll do the prep work. Um, that's real. Wait, we did it that way. And it seemed like it went really fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, okay. So let me make sure I have Especially this right. So space. the concept is 500,000 for the area lot, 100 yep. for PD, HVAC, yep. 10 that's for right. highway HVAC, yep. and 100 for the excavator. Yes. Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. The wood chipper would be uh, free wood cash. Wood chipper free cash. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sidewalks in the fall. Mm -hmm. You got to decide some of these other things. Well, these we were going to do free cash already, right? I, on these. So the free cash, the rest of the free cash would be yep. all the restrooms, all the yeah. school buys, right. all school asks. Yep. Yep. Air conditioners. That was my only concern. Yep. Dishwasher school. Yep. Okay. So we were just let's just confirm this because this is what we were talking about. I'm sorry. Um, School stuff. So, considering doing all the school stuff out of free cash, which would be the the restroom replacement, the flooring, the air conditioning for the music room, commercial dishwasher, cooler. That's it. Cooler. And yeah, that was the, the walk-in cooler, cooler well, replacement. The was cooler is one of the, the board. The board of health can't sign off on um, on the kitchens for the fall if the if the cooler and the right and the um, dishwasher. Air, dishwasher doesn't work because. What happens is it doesn't get up to temperature, so you're not sanitizing the stuff. But that's the thing. If you pay for it with free cash. Yeah. Um, so what I was telling We need to be able to do it for the fall. Right. Which We're limping through. If we don't vote it, they won't be able to get it. Right. So right. one thing that I just suggested to Trevor is maybe I take these lists and sort of pull them apart for tomorrow. Yeah. So that I could... Refine and Julie had bit. suggested it anyway yeah. and refine it so that you see what the projects are she's already sort of done that yep um and then show what we just talked about in arpa what we talked about in free cash and then what we talked about in free cash for the fall mm -hmm. because okay. then it gives yeah. everybody a perspective on what you guys are thinking in terms of the arpa funds yeah right? on the stabilization regular stabilization they decreased that to 100 right that's not still a 250. no no they want yeah. to Excuse me, they want to be able to put 100 in. CIPC wants to be able to put 100 in, but they just don't think it's there. No, we can I, see when I, we get it together. But we you also, I mean, we could because we're not, we know we're not going to do the Leary lot in the next two months, but right. why put it in and then pull it out again? Right. And so that's the thing I was and thinking. It, it's if just you one more use thing. Your free cash just to do some free of this cash. stuff. I mean, I know everybody always wants to leave 250 on the table. The issue with that is. In the, the periods where you really do have to do something and you leave that on the table, yeah. it looks like you're not, it, it just looks uh -huh. like you may not be yeah. accurately planning. And yeah. I'm not criticizing, this is yeah. a pattern that- No, you know, has the capital stabilization, I wanna to try to keep as high as we can. Yeah. Because that's different than a regular stabilization. Right. And so Because I, we're putting that money aside to- It's rainy you know, day fund, mm -hmm. general? Well, well if you have capital, an accident. The capital. Yeah, we're but putting it aside have... because when we have to buy a dump truck for four hundred thousand dollars, yeah, it doesn't hit us all at once because right. we've been Absolutely. putting money aside. Yeah. Well, and also just, I mean, we have storm damage all the time. Yeah. What if there's damage to our buildings and that so... we have to, you know, that is not covered by insurance because not all water damage is covered by insurance. Exactly. But when when do we pull the trigger on this rainy day concept? So for capital stabilization, I know the goal is to get to a million. And I respect that. But the minute you get to a million, you're gonna knock it back. So the flexibility of using that capital stabilization is maybe something CIPC could start pulling, chewing on a bit after town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say one thing I almost forgot. So if you look at your capital plan, you will see a highlighted section that says 325,000. I think it's for a loader, right? No, it's for a freight liner. It's a dump truck. Uh, is it a dump truck? Okay. Yeah. So that is, let me make sure I'm approving for parking. It needs okay. to be approved for FY24 to order now. Okay, so this Freightliner, they need a year in advance to build that cabin chassis. 
And so Chris Miller, and I brought it up with CIPC um, last, well, we can, at we our can, last meeting. We, we can take a vote. We it and, and confirm that we will fund this next year because he's got to get an order in. Yeah. And so it means that we confirm it and we definitely, that's the first thing that gets funded next year. That's that's no different than um, pre-ordering our ambulance. It's right. like- Or pre-ordering the police. It's like 16, yeah. it's 16 months out for an ambulance oh, yeah. now. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. I mean, John's- John's gonna be out six months for a cruiser. More than that, it's 13 months. That's 13? what he said on this, that's what he said yeah. Sunday or Saturday, yeah. Wow. So John's in a similar situation. So what I would like the board to consider doing is, is even by consensus, supporting that so that we can put a yes on that and let Chris know that he can put that yeah. order in. Yeah. We can, we can all vote, finance we, the select board and- mm -hmm. We can vote board. that tomorrow. Yeah, and then we um, can take it up after. We can vote it, but yeah. also the CIPC can vote yeah. it tomorrow. Yeah, let's okay. do that tomorrow. I just, again, that was that, one thing. That's the difference between Plan. Capital stabilization and regular stabilization. Mm -hmm. Right. And you could vote to take, you could take, you could split it, take half of it out of capital stabilization and half of it out of free cash. I mean, but it's increased. Yeah. It, that was 220,000 in the placeholder. It's now 325. Yeah, I know. So if you expensive. put it in, if we sign up, if we, if we actually commit to it, then we have to, we just know that if That's that price gonna changes, it's going to be at least that, maybe more. We've got to get some money for the sewers. Yep. We just got to get some money for the sewers. This is ridiculous. So that feels pretty good about the capital. I think we're so yeah, if I do we're it comfortable that way, here. If we'll I'm, look at it tomorrow. So I'm yeah. going to need to take we're moving some time in that direction. That. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So is there anything besides sidewalks in the fall? This piece of this or did? Not at the All moment. Right. All right. I'll leave that the way it is. Well, we're just going to leave the sidewalks open ended. If we need right. more money, we're going to put more right. money towards it. Right. Yeah. We're not going to put a dollar amount on it. Okay. Because we don't really know if, if we're doing all the prep work, we don't really know how much it's going to cost. Right. And we already have 200000 yeah. that we're not going to hit. Because yeah. we were going to take the mini excavator out of the sidewalk. Right. Now that we're not. We're now we're not. Shape. So let's just see if we're yeah. truly going to spend. I mean, 200000 has been sitting there. Yeah. No, so let's use it. Yep, I yeah. agree. I would like to get those sidewalks started. I really what think that would be useful. I know. I agree. We should be doing all this stuff for the 350 Jeez. for sure. Yeah. So let's get started. Yeah. I know. Yep. And I can sign that as soon as as soon as that revenue replacement happens. What? The only other thing um, whoever wants me to shut up, sorry. I'm just trying to move the only, along. The only well. other thing that we had talked about the ARPA for was the social worker. And I don't, uh, you know, that has that need has not gone away. Um, we were talking to the NATO persons today about the grant, and we were talking about how we were trying to work with the schools and stuff, and potentially through this outreach money. And you know, so it brought up again, what are we going to do about the social worker? I mean, we're not talking about very much money, but. It has to come from us because it's not a regular budget item. That's that's not a recommended use for our. I know that's what clawed back. So how are we going to fund it? Do we? So you know what we need to know. We need to know what our needs are. We need to reach out and get a feasibility study about what our needs are before you make a decision about how to fund. Because and frankly, I had a conversation with a, a healthcare professional about that. And the question is, is we know there's just an overwhelming need because COVID taught us, if it taught us anything, it taught us that there's not, that, that the support because of the, the pandemic itself was just not there. But what we, we really don't know what the true needs in town are. So we need somebody to, to help us figure that out before we decide on a social. Work. Well, I'm hoping that the extra nurse hours will pick up on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping because Cindy or whoever we hire will be in at the senior center with the seniors. So you had voted to do a community health work. And so we tried to get through that. But with the change in the senior center outreach. No, no, no. The, I'm talking about the nurse being able to, right, the public right. health nurse being able to observe and be with the seniors three days a week. Right. And then hopefully doing outreach for homebound. But then maybe. Um, you also have the outreach coordinator at that senior center. Yes. So to some and, extent, but really, and I can ask, maybe Allie knows. 
where we could get, get some help with a study about what we need. Like what, what is the real need out there? Well, I have because to tell you the real, the real need is to keep the schools open. And that's why we were- But the mm -hmm. school has more ability than we do. The school I know. already has yeah. the social workers. Oh, no, I know. But that's what I'm saying. The right. most the important thing is to keep the schools open because the kids need the socialization and the, right. and the routine of school. And that's mm -hmm. why we focus. And so they're working on that? That's where no, no, that was what we were justifying this grant for was to work with the schools to keep the schools open. You know, so, the outreach and, so you know, what's data. what's the coordination with the schools? Because that's not something that I, I'm even aware no, of. Like, is where is that going? going? We're no, not, no, I'm, uh, we coordinate every day. I mean, I, Darius and I are like talked all, throughout the whole pandemic almost daily and Meg Birch. So, I mean, the whole idea is to keep the schools open. Yeah. But right. it has I get to be. That. Okay. But, so, all right. From, a, from, Let's a, see so, from the social worker's perspective, maybe the school is the better place for it if you're really working on the No, I mean, some, well, I, I don't have a problem if we try to define it better because I think we need to know what the needs are the right. feasibility yeah. of what we well, want we'll to see if we can get Allie in here for one of the meetings would you like me to have Allie come talk about that please I can I just um, cannot look at the other bit. I think that would be very helpful because uh, we haven't been really maybe maybe not being able to really get full you know sort that out well that was the thing with the hiring of the senior center outreach coordinator we couldn't come up with the number of hours that we would need to dedicate to using Ali and using the opportunity um, that Ali had through her ARPA funds so that we could have that outreach worker, that community health worker. So we didn't, we couldn't dedicate that much time. And so, you know, maybe that's why I say, maybe we think about what the real social worker needs are. Do we need a social worker? We may not need that I think well, I think we need public health nurse for the seniors more than. And so you're planning for the yes, public health yes. nurse, so you're already taking some of that on. So let's look at it look at it as a step by step. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Okay, let me make myself a note to get Allie in here. Um, do you guys want to look at the warrant? I I'm good you. with the warrant. Okay. Yeah. So there's two things, and I mentioned it at the finance committee. See, Trevor heard me describe this, so. <laughs> <laughs> Three times, four times. I'm ready. So there's a few things that have moved, been moved around at the request of the moderator and town council. Uh, can I borrow your copy? For what? Oh, you want my copy? What do you need? No, just do you have a copy of the warrant? I left you a copy. Oh. Can uh, I steal it for a second? Can it if it's in here. Oh, you did give me that. Yes, here it is. Yep. Sure, no problem. All right, so I'll go through it real quick. Um, you don't have to. Okay, so we moved both consent articles together. Dan thinks from a process perspective, it'll be easier. Okay. And, and both, any tables that we have put together, we will put in. That's one of the reasons that Brenda and I are ready to do an info session next week, Carol. Um, we do have to take a vote on, okay, so we have our revolving funds. We have the creation of the foster care transportation revolving fund. And Lisa sent me some information that I was going to print for you guys um, that just tells you why we need it. We do have to take the vote on the authorization to enter into an MOU. Um, we are going to tighten that language up a little. Lisa wasn't sure that we needed to because there's some allowances for school committees to do certain things without mm -hmm. town meeting, statutorily without town meeting permission. But we are going to take that vote. The class comp follows that. Um, Oh man, I just realized uh, we voted um, CIPC 31,000 for the cooler. It's 36, 727, 42. Yes, here. that'll have to get revoted because they did a, um, they had an they, error. Oh, that's right. They didn't know this. They had an error in a. Um, Jennifer, don't let me forget. They had an error in the way they they took the central Got it. This formula instead of the pupil formula. And Sherry, okay. uh, Shelly, Apologize profusely. Just, just a, there's an error. I mean, I, I understand. So it went by. Right. It went to finance last night, and I was yeah, aware so of I what happened. Yeah, so I changed it in the warrant, but it's not changed on the capital. So I have to make <coughs> excuse that me, change. we're gonna have to redo that. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I moved snow and ice up before the omnibus budget, and right now, Carolyn, it's about what is what did she say, ninety thousand? Yeah. Because they had an extra. They had another bill come in. Yep. And then the budget, and then. 
the vote to appropriate the collective bargaining agreements. And if we don't have the one, if um, we don't have one, we'll can just- Can I just go back to the snow and ice? Oh, sure. Can you just um, ask Chris when you have a chance when he's back? Well, he'll be here tomorrow, but um, you wanna make sure all the salt bills were accounted for? Yeah, actually, Brenda's gonna have Diane check with the vendors. Okay, so because that we, get that. Um, we had, excessive you I mean there was just a lot of salt use this year because of the rain freezing right rain. and so that's why the number changed in the budget okay because this is a free cash payout so this is one of those things that we already got to out mm. all right no I just wanted to make sure that all the salt was paid off yeah she's asked Diane to go through and find those so then sewer wastewater enterprise fund and we have the phase two upgrades project so I have a question about this. Do you want us to put it, do you want me to put in the 3 million or just leave it as a sum of money? Sum of money, it'll be in the- In the uh, motion, in it the will motion. be there. Yeah. And fine. probably we would give that information out, but I thought about it when I was thinking about the water. Yeah. Um, and then we have SCEMS Enterprise Fund and we'll put the table in. So anywhere that there, where you see insert table is just a note to me so that we can get those in. Mm -hmm. We will be able to pass over FY 2022 capital project. And I explained it to finance yesterday. At the time that we finalized the warrant, we didn't know clearly that we wouldn't have to revote anything at town meeting for use of, of ARPA funds for projects. So we'll just pass that over. And I talked through this with Dan and Lisa and Jen Wallace. Um, and then fiscal 23, we'll settle those in the next week. Here's, here's the one I wanna to talk to you about, the reallocation of congregational church funds. So- We aren't gonna do it. We can't, I, the reason I would suggest we not do it is because, you know, John, John got us a structural engineer to come in and look at the church. Julie was there, he was there, um, Tim Hilchy went. Um, I came late because I was in the middle of a call, but essentially the structural engineer said there's two major fixes. Do you have a truss that's separated in, in the trussing at the, on the roof? There's a truss that's separated and it's bulging out on the side of the roof. Or on the that's side why there's the, tilt. It's, and so it's also impacting the steeple. So there's, it's, it's pushing. The truss is the major repair that needs to happen right away. The steeple then, it would take some relief off the steeple, but then we have to fix the steeple because it is tilting to the side. And part of it's because of the truss. So I would prefer, since we do have this money, we know that we're going to have to pay some of the costs for rehabbing the other sections, but I would, I think we should make that repair I, I, until we decide what to do with the building. I, I'm hoping we'll get a quote this week, supposedly. We're supposed to hear from him. Yes. This week. yes. And so once we get the quote, um, hopefully it will be enough there to cover what we have to do additionally from what DA is going to do, mm -hmm. plus this repair. And this repair will then, the church is in apparently really good shape. And so, um, you know, structurally. Except besides for the balcony, for that, yeah. Um, so. The bathrooms are gonna be rebuilt anyways. Right, and, and so are, I think we just pass over this and we'll take it up yes, again. Yes, I, I would, right now, I would say I'm very comfortable passing it over. So I'd make that motion that we pass that over if you want to form a vote. Well, actually I think we we'll, can't right So what the suggestion from Lisa was. Closed, right? Warrants closed. Well, we, we'd no, have to vote to reopen well, the warrant. And then, no, no, no. What we would do, what we're doing, is just recommending that the motion be passed over. Oh. And so, my recommendation to the board is pass over 2022, pass over this one, um, and we can wait and do that recommendation in the guide. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Okay. But I didn't know if you wanted us to vote on it formally. I don't want to. I don't want to reallocate that money based on. No, that. I think we keep it just in case we yep. do have more costs that we don't anticipate, especially with the rehab. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this is where that money, that thirty-six thousand, comes into play. So I had Shelley's revised request, and I made the changes. I'm going to have Brenda and I are going to look at this tomorrow. I'm going to have Brenda check my numbers, but it's thirty-six thousand, not thirty-one. So we changed it in the article, but I forgot to change it in capital. So I'll go back and fix it. No, that's all right. Just let Mark know, and then we'll vote it in our meeting prior right. to. So, oh, and there's two things you guys have to vote tomorrow, Carolyn. You guys have to vote to approve the three million. Yes. And then we would have to revote this one with the increase because of the clerical. Yep. Okay. 
And then community there was one, wait, wait, there, there was one there. other, there was one other thing that we were supposed to vote. What was it? The, um, the 36,000 oh. 36, for the, you, you just mentioned for the, no, yeah, that was in one. addition to that. Yeah, there, no, there was two, there were, and the, th the three million, the, um, this, and there was one, there was two things we were already supposed to vote on tomorrow, plus, plus this change in the cooler. So that's three things. I uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go it. look at my notes. We'll remember at three in the morning. Yeah, I know. I you always can text remember. Me. Yeah. You know. I'll be awake. But that's, that's one effect. Um, it so, always comes to me in the middle of the night. It's so annoying. <laughs> it's because our brains process at certain times. Mine does too. Um, okay, so community preservation fund, hopefully we'll have some information so that we can start getting that table together. Mm -hmm. And they do want um, current balances on there. So that's why it says current balances. And, you know, Brenda was planning to do that, but I want to leave a note for myself. Yep. Um, and that was something that both Dan and Lisa thought would be useful so that people don't ask as many questions because they ask it of you. Um, the extension to the Indian House grant. So there was a change that Lisa made in that warrant article to say completion of the project in 2023. Give it a, a, a time frame. We had left it open. She suggested he still, they it still might get it done by, by right. June 30th, but Tim is really nervous about it. That's yeah. all. So Tim, that's why um, we did it. And it doesn't yeah. hurt if we extend it. No, no, it's fine. It will, the project itself is done. It's just getting the Mass Historical Society to sign on. Yeah. Right. And so I don't think she has any issues with the sale of real property, but I'll ask her to look at it again. I was, I cobbled that together myself. So I, and I'm not How is that going? Is that, it's, I had a conversation with Jeff Ethier. We're going to circle back around next week. Okay, good. Um, so actually that might even be done before our meeting. I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> They're supposed to have gotten their phase two in. So, um, all right. So the next one is <sighs> okay. the request. What was the question he was asking though? He was asking some oddball question, wasn't he? Ethier? No? Um, For what? I don't think so. I think it was basically once you guys settled the PSA, um, you have to, about the uh, um, yeah, the Oxford property. Once we're, you settle the PSA, the there's a time period where they do the phase two. Mm -hmm. I think they're waiting on. They're waiting on stuff. phase two. They're waiting on tip now, the, state. the thing is, is we can't, so if, if we were to go to the next step, my thought is you got to do two things at once. You've got to do the expedited permitting process as well as figuring out whether the town would be interested in the tip and so that's a question that you and i have to sit down and talk about carolyn because you're on the tip committee i know um so but the with the expediting finish, that means all start the plans come to the select board right. yeah like we did all the plans will they say we're, we're the, yep. we're the yes. authority the select yeah. board so is everything's going to be coming to us it's not going through the planning board. but it's essentially a site plan review process right yeah it's the same yeah it's the but same it's through process us instead of right yes yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's ex expedited permitting. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's Just right. like pilot. Mm -hmm. So that process should start relatively soon. It's just a question of what they co what it comes back with their phase two and yeah. you know what when they start sending things over to us. Okay. So there hasn't been any change in the request to the legislature. Speed limits. There was a slight change in that, but I think it was. I think we talked about it last week. It was the definition in the state law is thickly settled in this district. Um, sewer bylaws. So this is, you're going to pass over this because we don't have anything. But, mm -hmm. and, and that's Lisa's recommendation, Dan's recommendation, my recommendation. Because we don't have anything to give anybody. But what we could do is give some talking points and say, you will see this come up as we address some of our bylaws in upcoming meetings mm -hmm. and maybe give them a couple of things to think about, but they'll see it when it comes up. I feel like we're missing something. This is such a short warrant. Mm -hmm. I know, but you know, if we are missing something, we can call a special. Well, there's no bylaws. Yeah, I there's, know. No there's no bylaws, bylaws. there's no zoning. So there's, um, it just then, seems really short. Yeah. The citizen's petition, which I had to I put back, they, Lisa told me to put back the word citizen petition in it. So I did that. And we almost forgot to put in the meeting room language or the 
the uh, election. election language because last year, the last two years, Where we, we didn't have elections at the same time that we had right. town meetings. So it was a great catch on Jen Wallace's part. Yep. Um, and then we confirmed the where we have to post everything for public places seven days prior to the annual meeting. So that's all set. So really the things that we're missing are certain tables and um, we may need a little more explanation on that MOU, but certain tables and if we have tweaks to language. So I, I really think by next week we could have this done. Yeah, I think so too. Because it needs to be done by the 14th. Let's do it. But, you know, even, even moving forward in terms of signing this, it doesn't change substantially. Right. You know, the no. warrant is set, so. I'm fine with it. It looks fine. Okay. So if, if you're okay with it, then we'll, we'll present it in a, a more final form once we get the tables. Whatever tables we can put in. Okay. Yeah. So I would hope that, that Brenda and I can get that done next. Finance okay. Done. Okay. Good. Next. Finance does have this meeting, does have this in front of them. They plan to be able to make recommendations to some of these articles. Um, assistant Highway. Okay. So Brenda and I talked. Um, we think the workload for the assistant superintendent needs to be recognized. It's significant and it's grown since, since we started this. And so in light of the fact that we've done this with other employees, Brenda and I suggested doing a one grade temporary pay adjustment for Chris Miller. I think he's taken on the responsibility that, and, and granted, if, for instance, if I got, if I'm gone, Jennifer sits in my seat, but the extended period of time was unexpected. I mean, it's and I been think the entire time that he's, to yeah. January 1st. Yeah. And he's been, he's been doing it since you got hired almost. Yeah. He's been doing this pretty much since, do you have anything you want to add, Jennifer? I'm sorry, because she was working with me. I do. I just want to say that Chris has been so responsive not only to our office, but to um, community, everybody. I've gotten such positive feedback. He has every emergency, every phone call, even if it's something little, helping me with public requests of information, taking tons of boxes, no matter what it is, he's been there and he's really stepped in and his communication is, is, is really awesome. And I, think that it's great if we could recognize all the work that he's done in Kevin's absence. Yep. I, I mean, I have to say my, all my interaction with him has been really positive. I mean, it's just like he's in Chicago and he's coming tomorrow for the, you know, tour of River Road so that we can get going on that. And, you know, I mean, he's, he's just always so accommodating. Well, it, and it's the fact that there's so many other administrative pieces that we didn't ante anticipate him having to deal with as well. Mm -hmm. So I just, and here again, I'll echo everything about Chris. I think he's doing a wonderful job. But I just want to make sure we remind everybody that we did this once before. No, and we when forgot. the superintendent came back, we forgot. the employee was never stepped back. We are well aware of that. Okay. I just so we do it until until things yes until things and here are again, it's not a reflection you know it's in the highway chris is you know is there i didn't have a way to do that everything positive about it. so just is there another way so it's not an expected like sometimes you get used to your pay it's kind of like you well, know we're doing it with the whole i know people. i know it's and they know once the, once a person is hired that stops right yeah. so that's really the limitation is once the staffing is mm -hmm. up to what we plan for yeah. that stops okay right it just what happened before is it yeah. got forgotten yeah maybe there's some way to make a, a note in payroll or some you know something that just alerts i don't know we'd have to talk to brenda about that okay there is we can do it what we can do is we can do a what i usually write a memo defining what this is 
and there's an until such time as we have a treasure collector or we have a town clerk, this stops. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it would be until such time as the staffing levels, including the superintendent, are at status quo, is what I would say. Okay. Something like that. Because even when Kevin comes back, it it may still be he's not going to be able to work full time. It, for well, a while. it may it may be a different he may be working slightly differently. And so mm -hmm. that would take a little bit of pressure off of Chris. But on the other hand, he's still gonna have some of those issues that he's going to have to deal with that frankly and we don't know what the status is with kevin right. i'm hoping to be able to meet with him okay tomorrow yeah. and, would, and casey would it need to be defined when as of when like it starts or does it yeah. i yeah. would say we define it as of when kevin went in the hospital so really january 2nd january yeah january 1st or january january 2nd great thank and you he was, he was sick before and, and Chris i know and over. that's the thing but it really hit like a ton of bricks when yeah, yeah. Kevin went out fully. I mean, I'm, I feel like we, I mean, he was doing more work than over the holidays for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it would, it's a, cons I would consider it a consistency thing and I'm not just saying mm -hmm. the workload or the fact that that some It'll of that was happening. Down, yeah. I mean, the holidays, having coverage for the storms, we had some couple storms over the holidays and I mean, he he was doing basically that in December when Kevin was sick in December. So, I mean, I, I feel like it should be December 1st, not January 1st. Why don't we, we did it with the other personnel as of the point really that yeah. that person was oh. no longer there right. in the position. Mm. I feel like right. we should do it that way. Yeah. Um, you tell me what you guys think about and tell me what you want to do. I mean, I just all your I just vote. wasn't just aware of this, so it's 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 news to me. So I just wanted to think about it a bit. But I um I would think on the I mean on the second when Kevin went out, I think that makes it feels appropriate. Yeah. That's all right. I, I just then want to acknowledge that Chris was yeah, yeah. And yeah. Kevin was really yeah, sick and, right after Thanksgiving and he really from Thanksgiving on it's been He's been physically unavailable. I know he's still working. Well, yeah. the, <laughs> yes. his email at I've his been hospital text. I know. I know. I know that he's Sorry. doing texts and just get and the view, viewpoint of the bean counter. Happy to. Um, if we pay him from Thanksgiving on, then we have to give him an amended W two. Oh, oh, that's right. January okay, 2nd. never mind. January second makes sense. Good point. And we will so, say this is this is go this ends when. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Capacity so. comes up to status quo. Well, so. Then, then let's. If we're, Dave is absolutely right. What a nightmare. So, if we do January second, then when Kevin comes back, I'm sure there's going to be an adjustment period. So, we'll just fluff it on the on the out on this end versus the other end. On the beginning. Yeah, or on the end. Yeah. In the end. We'll start yeah. January second, and then. Yeah. Then yeah, if we start it well, and then and did it, it, didn't we do um, treasure the tre assistant treasurer collector and assistant town clerk January first, Jennifer? We did, but what Carolyn is saying is maybe we could extend it a little bit longer when we are back to capacity, just as a transition time. But it's going to take take some time to get yeah. back. Yeah. I mean, Kevin's right. not going to be okay. able to work yeah. full Let's time. Start January. Yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, we hope he's back. But yeah, he, you know, he's not going to be able to put in a 40 hour week from, you know, the yeah, first yeah. week. Right. So right. So this extends a bit longer. A little bit longer on this end. Okay. Can I get a, I agree. a motion to approve the assistant uh, highway public works superintendent um, great, great, great increase, um, same step for starting January, retroactive to January 2nd, 2020, 2022. I, I will second that. Any further discussion? Okay. Just say thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. You want to really call nice. him tomorrow and let him know? Yeah. Sure. All, the, all those in favor? Aye, Charlie McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolford. So I'll make up. Oh, sorry. Next thing is storm damage funds. 
This was just a notice that we got the money, right? Yes. So yes. We're on. So um, we're using the 90,000. We, we've spent 90,000 already. So we took that off the warrant for the July storms. That's money we've already expended. And it was on the warrant to use free cash. So we removed that warrant article and we'll use 90,000 from this. And I'm hoping you will both support setting this aside for either um, repair work to River Road, damn it, the damage on River Road, if it's, if we do a lesser thing, or this will go towards the match, the 25% match of the River Road repair. Um, I mean, we've had been an estimate between 20,000 and 2.4 million. So can, there's a little bit of discrepancy and we're hoping to sort this out. Can we say for, um storm damage repair that way we have a lot more flexibility on if we decide it's not river road or if it's something else or well, well this was all over town. Right. Yeah. yeah it was so, there was damage all over town we had I know, but we had approximately four million dollars worth of damage but i i, I, I didn't want this to go for that i get it i just didn't want it to go into the general fund and no, no, right no we'll set it having aside a, having for, us try to sort out the 25 percent match yeah, for storm yeah. damage um, yeah, I, so I agree with that. So you want it as a special fund, a either special for fund grant or for... Yes. yes. And so I would say one thing. We did find out, we don't have a number, but there were some things that Kevin had said before he went out um, that may still need to be repaired. So I don't know what he was thinking. He's not here from the gas, so... Well, well that way it's there in case it's there's... It's there. And it's not pigeonholed to just River Road. It's pigeonholed with that right. kind of yes. concept. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I just don't match. want it to go into the general fund because this, no, is, this is for a this. drop it's in the bucket. And then yeah. we have to yes. figure out where we're getting a match. Yep. 25%. Good with that. Whereas that this, will, a, this will go There's to, a chance that we might be doing more work on the culvert or the stream coming out of uh, Richardson's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we have uh, approximately how much let, will we have left in that fund, Casey? 20,000. We have because about 20,000. We did allocate, so part of the, the July storm damage, you had said allocate 20,000 out of this. We have about 20,000. What we're, what we're going to do, um, and we're filing an NOI so that we can um, a bundle the NOI, which means with the Conservation Commission, which means that that we can do some of the maintenance of and the, you know, as the silt comes down. It's a natural movement from yep. that mudslide. So as the silt moves through where it gets stuck, we can go in and clean it out on a regular basis without having to, um, you know, wait for an emergency declaration. Okay. So hopefully, yeah. and we have, and that's separate money that we set aside, yeah. left over from our um, project. And so Kevin is, this is how I know he's working. He, he worked on it. John and, and was working with GZA, who's work on, working with us. And then we're going to do that for yeah. us. And Kevin we're hoping, found the funds we're, hoping we're finally get that done. Yep. Okay. Next item. Okay, surplus property. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to, um, for the, to, to get rid of surplus property at the um, South County Senior Center. These were just fabric, yarn, papers, expired food, straws. I'm not sure why we're doing this, but. Let's just get rid of it. Let's throw up the trash. So, um, yeah, you might need a dumpster. Yeah. I don't think there's that much, but she's okay. Correct. What I what I said what I said was maybe we coordinate this with Chris Miller and and the staff at the highway department to see how. We Is there any way we can mark some of the stuff that's in the area that we might be able to dispose of of all those supplies? Or is everything pretty much? I think most of it's out of the upstairs, right? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm talking about in the church. Oh, I, well, here, a yeah. quick, a quick thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was I was talking with Brenda about get, getting some shelving to put in the church, in the sanctuary, on the in the media, like when you first come in the doors off the street and on that other side wall, um, to order four or five shelving units metal shelving units and then we can put the tubs there i talked with lisa this week she's moved already moving some stuff out of there and then there's some stuff we're going to ditch as you said there's things that to go to get rid of some of the broken signs 
Exactly. Let's yeah. just you know, no. Compare. They actually can be recycled. Right. Okay. They're metal let's, recycled. Let's, yeah. yeah. Exactly. We can put that in the in our thing, and so the yeah. goal is to kind of get started on that, but to order some shelving units that we could put the tubs in, because there's a lot of good things that we want to keep. Um, but and, but we need to get it out of there because before you know it, DA may decide, oh, we're going to get and started. We've got some free time. Somebody has some free time, and um, then we don't have any time to move it. Well, so I'll bring down my kids or something, and we'll yeah. Well, well, Brian we Ravis said that on, if we so. need help, you'll get one of the teams oh, from the perfect. high school yeah. to help us. So oh, let's, let's we'll, order let's, some we'll of those. coordinate a day and do that. Yeah, let's order some of those shelving units and get it yeah. set up. So yeah. we can once that them. organ's out of there, you have plenty of room on that. Exactly, you have room on that wall too. But yeah. I think it makes sense to organize it. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Okay. Some of the um, some of the medical supplies are are expired. So. Yes. Right. I talked to Lisa about them. that too. So I made a motion to get rid of this stuff. Any mm -hmm. second on that? Second. Oh, oh I'm favorite? sorry. Yes. Okay. I thought I did. No, nope, maybe you I might have. You might have. Yeah. I did. Well, I Carolyn. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank yep. you. It done. I think I was thinking about that mess over there. <laughs> I know. I know. It's gonna take a while. Yeah. It needs to get going. It almost looks like storm damage. <laughs> So we've done our stuff already. Yeah. We've got another letter. We have a letter. Hmm? I know you did. I put it somewhere. Okay. Okay. Uh, we received a letter from Mr. Lowe. Um, Wish to thank you for your request. The select board recommends the situation should be discussed with the South Jefferson Fire District and Mass DOT, as the town does not have jurisdiction over the area that you're talking about. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Mr. Chair, I'll just explain the placeholder for appointments. Um, yes. Um, Jen Wallace had asked me to put in co-workers in case she needed to make a change and they see it on the next agenda as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have three public layers, I think. Great. Can you make a motion on those? So I'll make a motion. I well, think there's two public layers and public one. Way. Yes, and one uh, uh, one personnel, personnel board. Not personnel committee. So Thank for you. the public layers, I'll, I'll make a motion to appoint Sean Telega. Actually, there's two public layers. And Tyler uh, Schoenfeld. Those are for the term beginning April 6, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2022. Um, I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. And I'll also make a motion to um, appoint Eric J. Uh, Farrell to the personnel board. He had put in a, um, a letter of intent to want to serve, and I know there was a post on um, one of the social media sites asking for help uh, from the personnel board. So I'm very grateful um, and enthusiastic to make the recommendation to appoint Eric um, uh, Eric Farrell to the personnel board. Um, I will second that and say thank you very much. Yes, thank wonderful. you very much. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfson. And this I, is a Carolyn Ness. This is a term for April 6th, uh, 2022, and ending June 30th, 2025. Yes, it's a it's a yep. longer appointment. Yep. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and we also have a resignation. Yep. Um, and I just like to say a couple of words about this. So we have a resignation from Bub Driver from the transfer station. Um, Bub, Bud has served the town for over 20 years. I, I can't say enough uh, good things about Bud. He's got a great um, smile and he's always trying to help. And uh, I felt like he did a a great job at the transfer station for many, many years. And um, um, it, he, he had called me and told me that he was resigning and just, he said he's at a point in his life where he wanted to, you know, take some time to do other things and felt it was time to move on. And um, I just want to heartfelt thank you, thank you to Bud for all the help at the dump over the years, our transfer station over the years that I've had interactions with him and um, helped me out many times. Many times he's helped many people out many times, lifting trash bags and putting a smile on people's faces. So mm -hmm. thank I, you I just much. as well would like to thank Bud for many, many years of being cheerful in all weather. Yeah, all uh, weather. Bloody hot and freezing cold and yes. snow and rain. And he was yeah. always so cheerful and yep. so nice to um 
everyone to help. So I just want to say thank you, bud, and good luck. Yes. And he, I hope he still wants to be our he, um, <laughs> cultural resource officer for another him. another few months. I did talk to him about that. He is going to um, think about that too and, and try, try and think about a transition because there will be a time where he will move on and we do need to think about who well, might he was want gonna to serve try to that. transfer. I mean, he was going to try to see if there was anyone interested. So if there's anyone interested in our cultural um, resource. resource officer position. Um, this is about Native American yeah. um, artifacts and different and, things that are buried in the ground. And, and really, it is an important position to um, to make sure that you know what belongs and what is in Deerfield stays in Deerfield. And there was a time where a lot of things were taken out of this town, and Bud really wrote wrote the laws on this and he had the model that is used across the state actually yeah, to, yep. to make sure that um the antiquities that are are part of deerfield's um history remain here and are and actually cherished we, and known about um anyone that has like uh, construction projects um that need a, a cultural resource officer to sign off on it's actually an important position it so is. um we actually have to have that someone there um yeah. and that's coming up for construction in the fall as yeah, well so yeah, for sure yeah i'm gonna make sure that that happens yeah so thank you so much bud thank so you yep. thank you bud so make a motion to accept rec regretfully accept his Regret resignation many thanks, many thanks. Right. yep i will second that and say thank you bud mm. any further discussion no nope. all those in favor Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. His last day will be April 9th. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, it's coming Saturday. So please, please. Oh my gosh. That's yep. right. Yep. It's a Saturday. Oh, you have to go to the desk. I yep. can't. We're going to the. Well, when do we get back? It gets out at noon. So please <laughs> stop on the way back. Stop on the way back and tell Sorry. them how much you appreciate them. Try, try to get down there because yep. it's out after our. I'm going to be dead. <laughs> Your brain's going to be full. Waving will be good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't require waving. As long as Jennifer makes sure I'm signed up. <laughs> yes, Jennifer. Exactly why I put my camera on. I emailed Isabel and she says, you all are definitely signed up. So not to worry. Oh, I good. sent an email to oh, you well with her Thank confirmation. You. So you're all good to go. I knew you were. So. Um, Isabel are, did cancel my um um you know the women uh was it nico we we oh, okay. wemo, wemo registration for last week so the town should not get charged for that I think okay it's 35 bucks or something oh okay sure so make sure that that cancellation came through because we okay. had, i had signed up for it before we had um um you know postponed our climate change form so oh. she had canceled me out so there should be no bill for that oh, okay great i'll tell pat to look for that but you're all set thank you jennifer, Thanks, jennifer. <laughs> you're welcome now i only have to find my vaccine card but i think alex is going to help me get it online and it does say that i did read that while well, you yeah you do need your proof of vaccination so and alex says he's he's on it yeah i know thank you alex okay um we don't have any annual or other permits so one nope. we already did right yep we don't have any other permits. okay town okay, administrator's like report anything so, nope. so okay thank you uh next <laughs> <laughs> oh come on i have one thing one, one thing okay so as we've been trying to navigate our vacancies in wastewater, um, we just when we talked to Amherst and to Pete, Peter Thurber from DPC, we got feedback from them that we could we should consider creating an operator in training position, which would allow us to hire somebody to then train them up to be a certified operator. Uh -huh. um, Amherst was gracious enough, Amy Rusecki down there was gracious enough to send me a, a position description. Mm -hmm. So what I would like the board's um, at least consensus approval on is for me to take this job description, rework it so it, it has the same elements our normal job descriptions are yep. have, 
and take it to Quint, take it to personnel board for approval because we have a hearing next week. If we need to be able to do this, we don't really have a position description for somebody who's an in-training person. Let's do it. And it's come up at the point where we keep, we've, we've done everything we I can Listen, think of. Listen, well, there's we nothing are. we can do. We've got to have somebody yes. do this so position. Let's get so let's get We're up. in violation. I can clean this yep. up, get it ready. Great. We need to be included in the schedule. And so yeah, I've reached out. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. So awesome. I'll turn it into something and it'll give it to them and I'll talk oh, to you guys. Great. Okay. That's really, he wants me to stop telling him stuff. No, I don't, that's okay. It's okay. If we find a person or two, we need to be able to move on this. So yes. At the end of the year, right? I At the end of the year, we can transfer yeah, money around between accounts. We have that ability to do that 5%. Right. And so if we have to rate a few line items, I think it's really worth it because oh, yeah. it, it will take a year for them to get certified. Absolutely. Yeah. And, so I think and that's if they pass all the tests because right. you have to this physically do to the adjustments in sewer. We're going right. to have to do that next week officially. You guys will have to mm -hmm. take a vote on sewer. Yep. But I will talk to Brenda about that and we'll give it we'll give it some sort of a Do we money. have enough money in well do we have enough money in the sewer account that uh, reserve to be able to do this yeah. or do we have to Yeah, I mean I think so. Yeah, and then okay. we then we've then we set our rates to account doing, for this. Right. Yes. But yeah, we're good. I, I don't whatever we need to do, we need to do this if yeah. I get at least yeah. one or two people. And yeah. I'm sorry First, that it's those like ones will come out of the enterprise fund anyway. Correct. Right. Yep. right. And, and we so set the rates it, yeah. planning on it. If they didn't have enough reserve, no, we, we want to make sure it gets done do, one yeah. way or the other. And so I I don't mean it to seem like it's it's out of the blue, it's not. We discussed this. No, we've talked times. about this, and there's we don't have yep. no other choice, really. So. One thing that is out of the blue that I forgot about <laughs> was a um, email. Uh, this is about the SSO stuff that you yeah. were talking about, uh, Carolyn. And uh, so DPC on February 21st sent, sent us a proposal to take care of this. So w I'll just explain this for the public. But um, so uh, the the DEP had has um, published uh, new requirements of the collection system operators, specifically on or before July 6th, a permittee without a combined uh, sewer system shall submit to the uh, Department of uh, Department for review and approval using the form developed by the department for such purpose, a sanitary sewer overflow public notification plan. So that means if we have an overflow that goes into the river, you need to notify people and it has to be a specific form. So uh, DPC is doing this for a few other entities and they are uh, getting it signed up and um, you know get, getting it ready for us to do with a contract is uh, $2,450. I checked with Brenda, we have the money in the account uh, to do that. So what I would like is just to, to approve to do that. Okay, um, Alex, uh, you had talked about this. Yes. This is what you brought forward. It's the uh, act promoting awareness of sewer pollution and yes. water. Yes. That's exactly the same thing that uh, Trevor just um, stated. Right. Um, I'm I'm curious to know a little bit more about that. Um, how how much is that again? How much is a contract? Yeah, two thousand yeah. four hundred and fifty bucks for the whole year. It's for the scope of work to to put everything together for the um, so the the um, scope of work is so is DPC will gather the existing available information related to the collection systems in the town's existing SSO policies proposed plan utilizing the state's template DPC will prepare the necessary SSO notification plan including a description of how Deerfield will comply with all the applicable requirements of the. 314 CMR 16.04 regarding the public advisory notifications for applicable discharges um, and overflows described in, in 314 CMR 16.03 and then coordination with the town and mass DEP so coordination with either you and obviously when, once we have our, our wastewater operator they will be the ones that will start this process so it's really a blueprint for how we do it when we send it out. I, was I think the state so. already has that though. What's that? I think the state is already starting to do that and they're gonna work with boards of health about that. Um, but it's gotta come out of our plant. So as soon as our plant has a discharge, it's our operator that's gotta right. follow that process and 
let people know. Well, um, Ken, the only thing I would like to amend is that DPC work with Alex to yeah, meet, that's to, the meet town. Um, yep. to meet the public health requirements because um, because I, I wanna, yeah the stuff we have to do and be responsible for. Yeah, I just want to do some more research on the on the promulgation of the of the regulations that are coming out in June. Um, you know, I was on a webinar with MassDEP about this, um, and I think the DEP needs to do uh, more research about this as well, and in conjunction with boards of health. But um, I, I would love to look a little bit more about the exceedance level with the kind of variation that you know is is permitted in the regulations. Um, yeah, no, that's definitely something that um, that I'm I'm interested in to do a little bit more research on. Um, I I don't really know if there's if that cost is something that's feasible. If other towns are doing that, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we've we got to have a plan in place, right? Okay. I mean, it's, it's, What's the date of compliance on this? July 6th. Yeah. And we needed to do this by uh, March 15th. So we're already, just, we're already a little behind the schedule to get this going, but I think that they, you know, I mean, they should be able Alex to knock just it out went, by then. I mean, the but, yeah. just had a webinar. This he just had it, too, so I'm just surprised that... No, what I'm saying is that DPC wanted to get this going by March 15th so that they could have it all done for us by July 6th. Okay. Because that's when it has to be done by. So if if Alex yeah. wants to sit in on that with and I, obviously there'll be a there'll be a chain of command on how all this takes place, right? And when we yeah. notify and we'd want to well, notify you have Alex a, you have and set, Alex would notify uh, like when we had Irene and Greenfield was uh dumped yeah. like a million gallons a day and there was a whole procedure that we had I mean, I had to call Charlie Konecki, who's yeah. our district health officer at the time, and in, he walked me through it, and, and then he called um, uh, Nicole Zapka, who was up, up there at the time, and um, the health department, and we, we, Charlie came up and helped both of us through the whole process with DEP. It's huge. Right. And um, I think that's the that's the case here is to kind of get everything okay. set and ready to go, but if you want to, do you want to call Dave and well, I think I think maybe um, Alex can. I, I was just going to say when Dave starts to do this, if you could, Alex, if you could For consult sure. with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. To make I sure. All together, make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. So that what what we want from Dave is um, uh, just a like a cheat sheet that yes. tells. I mean, I have the old cheat sheet, which is yep. of course out of date by 20, 11 years or ten right. years, but what we want is the exact things like the warnings we have to do who yep. do we have to notify who is the person to call that's all that yeah yep, exactly and right. that way that way it's all yep. listed out and then you know obviously our new um, right. chief operator and, and alex will work together on all of that so um yeah i think because what they do what they've done is you have to identify any environmental justice populations yep. and i mean and we I do have done. those because that you know, our Deerfield River one and our Connecticut River one go right by the farms. Oh, yeah, for so sure. So you have language issues. So make sure, uh, Alex, we want to make sure the checklist for all that is, I mean, that's different. I mean, we never had that right. like 10 years ago. Well, and so, I think, the, you know, things in the state, I think this is in, in response to a couple of places that kind of let stuff go over. The, it wasn't during Irene. It was other times where like all of a sudden they dumped in the river you could hear those things and there was no notification nobody knew what was going on so this is a whole I thing know. where yeah okay so it's important to do i think just so. i, yeah, I will make we'll a motion to support that yeah um and, but see. just a little note to coordinate with alex yeah, so that for sure the board of it's health perfect. has a like a cheat sheet absolutely yep that's uh, one of the things we want to do is update some of our emergency plans you know have yes. all the little cheat it's sheets that together years. and they haven't been updated like this one I this know, one yeah. hasn't been updated since irene so i missed the guy from mapco i'm trying to think of his oh, name was... um greg lewis greg he had so many things i still have all the binders from those and we haven't COVID just took everything over we I know. Yeah. we're hoping to get going that's what yeah. this grant will pay um alex a couple hours a month to do this kind of stuff yeah. 
Great. So we're really excited about that. So, so the, actually, this will pay for Alex's time on this. Great. That sounds um, great. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All of those in favor? Oh, did you print one out? No, I didn't. Uh, I did. I gave oh, you did. Him. Oh, you gave the hand. Yeah, okay, oh, great. So there was a motion. Oh. Carolyn made the motion. I'll second also. the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfson. Um, the other thing I just want to talk while we're talking about sewer, and then I'll be done, is just um, is to see if we have consensus, and I think we do. We, I think we've talked about moving forward with the two change orders for um, for the wastewater treatment plant to bring us up to that 19 million. We obviously are going to ask for another three at town meeting to kind of finish South Deerfield plant, but. Uh, phase one was up to 16 million. Phase two is to kind of finish out um, up to that 19 million that we had authorized. And I think we have consensus to move I, forward. I thought we you... actually voted on okay, it, but I will, I will make I a motion. I couldn't remember that. I will make a motion to approve it just okay. to make sure. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? I can't We're approving the two change orders for, oh, yep, the, the I, one I for contingency and the other. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think we might have two, but um, so we'll just give that info back to Dave and they can get I rolling, give us some stuff. I Carolyn. I Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Wolf. Thank you. Okay. So I think what's really important, Trevor, is the reason when we were talking about it. Yep. And the timing. In my mind, I was thinking, okay, we have authorization to 19 million. You have a contingency fund and you have the grant of you know almost three million dollars. So you take the contingency fund and the grant for almost three million dollars. We you get paid back at the end when you get up close to the, to the 19 million, and then you have 3 million left over to do phase two. Mm -hmm. So there isn't additional borrowing needed. That's what I had in my mind. Right. But when you talked about the timing and we want to save money, we want to keep, keep our current contractor, which is doing fantastic work yeah. on, on time and on budget. We don't want them to incur the cost of setting up again and all that kind of stuff and coming back you know, or get somebody that's marginal like we've right. had in the past oh, yeah. on other like projects too other in projects right and now. down yeah. we can just down the street here name a couple but yeah. anyway um that makes total sense to me now and we just need to explain to people because i i myself was confused i was like why are we borrowing more three more million Yep. Well, we already only are going to spend 19 ish. Yep. But then we're going to spend 22. But it's to oh, 22 no. total. And we believe And then that. we get our 3 million back. Right. At the end of the grant. So it's still only like 19 million, but yep. it's the timing we need the additional yep. 3 million authorization. Okay. It's just important yep. that people understand. Yeah, yeah. For we're sure. not, for we're sure. not, we're not making more additional costs that weren't, you know. Oh, well, there is, I mean, there to, is to be honest cost, with everybody, not... yes, I mean, everything, you look at Springfield's project, it went from 30 million to 80 million. There's, there's, ex, I know. there's costs that have. But I meant we gone. weren't, we weren't right. doing, it wasn't yeah. because of a screw up. No, was, no, it's this just is the, the market, market is what it is. Right. And it's a lot. Increase. They have. Yep. Okay, I'll definitely work on that before our okay. yeah, information I just want, session. I, I just think it's, you know, people need to have it explained. I have a quick question. Uh, I was talking with Brenda today about um, the the budgets that the finance want to go over. Are, are we discussing anything of, of that? For I, I think something about next week. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, well, I I hadn't had a chance to talk to Dave and Trevor yet because I haven't worked the numbers yet. But we're hoping to do the forty-two dollars an hour, and um, we're going to cut back on some stuff. But the bottom line that was approved, hopefully, will stay approved. And we, I need to. So some of your hours, like this, for going over the emergency planning, if we get that grant, that will be paid for by that. Yeah. Um, we can sort it out. So I just, I haven't had a chance to work on the the okay. budget between. Um, Whenever you guys want to meet up. Um, well, I'm going to be here tomorrow to meet with Chris Miller. So hopefully, um, do are you do you have any time? I I know you're booked out, but let me hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, what's a good? Yeah, I'm yeah I'm free tomorrow. Um, the only thing is that I got um a webinar with uh, Massachusetts Health Offices. Uh, I'm sorry, Western Mass Public Health Association at 3.30.
That's the only. Okay. Thing. Well, I should be done before before then. Okay. And then we'll take a couple hours. To, I mean, an hour or so to look oh. over it and talk to Brenda. Let's do um, four. Let's do four. Well, because we might have to adjust some fees again. Okay. All, All right. right. Whatever works for you guys. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn? Yes. yes. I make that motion. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. I Carolyn Ness. I Dave Wolfer. Okay. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Jennifer. Thank Have you, everybody. Evening.